All right, I'm just going to start this video off with an introduction of a news event that it's not breaking news, but it's important for me to cover with you guys because I think it sets the stage for a lot that's going to happen over the next couple months in this market. Check it out. Congressman, will you resign? Congressman, will you resign? Will you resign? Did you mock So history was made when McCarthy was ousted. He was the only Speaker of the House that's ever been kicked out of his job in the history of the United States. And this was a big deal because I think it could directly affect America's credit rating. Now, you guys know that Fitch downgraded the U.S.'s credit rating earlier this year from triple A to double A. Now there are three companies that track or give a rating to the credit worthiness of countries. One of them is Standards and Poor's, one of them is Moody's, and one is Fitch. And there are some that are speculating with the rising debt, the political upheaval, as well as the potential of another government shutdown, which has only been kicked down the road about 45 days, and we are definitely heading to that point. There's the concern that America could face another downgrade. And the last time it happened, and yes, it's happened before, and America did survive, but the stock market took a major beat down for one day. It had a really, really strong sell-off and then bounced back. And so I want you guys to keep it on your horizon. This was a really big deal when he got ousted, and we absolutely could have a monumental sell-off crash day in the markets. But that wouldn't mean that we are actually into bear territory because as I've said to you guys repeatedly, the S&P 7, the S&P 500, the QQQ is actually having a great year and is still in an overall uptrend and favors a continued move to the upside. We do not have confirmation that these markets are falling apart. But when I watched him walk out of Congress with his tail between his legs, I knew that it was going to mean that there's going to be some dark, bearish, or red days on the horizon for stocks, and I want you guys to be keenly aware of it as well. This is the Stocks with Josh show. I'm traveling. I'm not in my usual studio, but I didn't want to miss giving you guys a video today. I want to just go back to this concern that the problems right now have been kicked down the road. The Fed kicked a potential interest rate down the road, and I think that's very likely to be given to the market in December. We've got the debt crisis and the government shutdown kicked down the road. And so we are not, I repeat, we are not out of choppy waters. This is not just going to be back to a bull run. Right now, the markets have schizophrenia. They're going up one day, down the other. They do not have a set direction. And so don't get too bullish or too bearish. Remember, we're doing some caboose trading strategy, which means that we're going to be the last car in the train. We're going to let the Fed decide what he wants to do with the interest rates. We're going to let the government decide what they're going to do, whether they're going to work together or not work together. We're going to let State Street, BlackRock, Warren Buffett, tell us what they're going to do. Then we're going to follow behind after the trend is clearly set. And that takes me to one of my biggest indicators, the VIX. The VIX measures volatility by the CBOE of the S&P 500, and it's referred to as the fear gauge. And specifically, it's measuring how many options are set as a hedge against the stock market. And when the big investment firms load up millions of dollars of insurance in hedging their long positions with calls and or puts, that's when the VIX spikes. And right now, and really less than 40 days ago, the VIX was sitting on the low price of $13, demonstrating that the markets were extremely calm. But since then, it's been slowly climbing. And I told you guys that when it reached 26, when it doubled from its current low position, that for me, that would signal a low of the turmoil and a potential of the markets to move back to going to a calmer state and back to the business of climbing. Because if you guys have been a long-term investor, that's what the markets do. They always go higher. The S&P traditionally gives year over year a 10% increase. So if you're a long-term investor, if you buy on these very bearish days, the VOO or the VTI, you can know that in the course of time, it has traditionally returned a profit. And so 
I'm watching the VIX. The other day, the VIX soared to a five-month high. What surging treasury yields mean for stocks? And what they mean is volatility. And so we're going to be watching this to hit as high as $26, doubling volatility from its recent low. And that's when we're going to speculate that the majority of selling is over. And you can see we went to 20, but we're not yet to 26, which means we're not yet out of the woods. We could pull back. It could calm down a little bit more, but we're going to see another surge higher on the VIX, I believe, in the months ahead with all of these problems that I'm outlining for you guys today. All right, I want to take a quick station break. If you're looking for free stock and you're getting into this market and you need better trade tools, you need to get a control of your stop losses, then check out the offer from the Moomoo Investment app. It's available in some places in Canada right now. It's available in Australia and in the United States. They're giving away up to 16 free stock to open and fund an account. So yes, kick your journey off with some free stock with the Moomoo Investment app. It's a zero cost to trade platform. And I host a free chat group on the app. We call it Stock Josh Fam. Get your free stuff, start investing, and come find us in the chat group. And if you need more help learning, trading, and investing in these choppy markets, I want you to check out the Stock Squad Patreon with myself, Keenan Grace, Stock Mo, and Stock Up with Larry Jones. All four of us are investing in that community. So invest in yourself and join the Stock Squad Patreon. I wanted to talk to you guys about Disney. You guys, I've been covering it quite a bit. It's an interesting play for me. I want to start off with this news headline. Disney World Resort announces new discounted tickets. And so here's what they're doing. Recently, I shared another headline with you guys that they were planning on loading up and investing in the parts of their business that have been profitable. The parts of the business that have been profitable have been their theme parks and their cruises. They're literally going to be doubling their cruise fleet and they're spending $60 billion to grow more of their theme parks. And then today's news, they're telling us in 2024, they're actually going to begin to lower their prices. And you guys, that's all they ever do is raise their prices. And so you know they've got to be hurting. And so they intend to lower their prices, not right now, but ahead of us in 2024. And in addition to lowering their prices, they're also getting rid of some of their restrictions of having to get a reservation to come to the park. So in the last couple of years, ever since COVID, if you wanted to go to the park, it wasn't enough just to buy a ticket. You had to buy a ticket and get a reservation, causing a ton of confusion. People coming into town, traveling from overseas, thinking they could just go to the park, then being told at the gate they didn't have a reservation. So they're making it easier to do business with Disney. Now, I'm going to get into some technicals on Disney, but I want to give you guys what I think it would take for Disney to begin to reverse. Now, I think the stock is setting up for a reversal. I think that's what this news story is about, investing in the parks, bringing the prices under control. But here's what Bob Iger really needs to do. He needs to bring AI to Disney. And you would be like, Josh, how do you bring AI to Disney? Listen, AI absolutely can impact and improve the operation and the operation profit of every single company in America. And I don't even, I'm not the one to integrate AI to Disney, but I'll tell you the day that Bob Iger begins to share his AI vision for Disney is the day that this stock is going to turn around. And there's so many ways that they could integrate AI into Disney and they could optimize the movement of crowds and they could bring to their customers on the app the very best times to avoid lines and how to move around the park from where they're logistically at to optimize their entertainment through AI. It's absolutely possible and they need to get on it. And that's going to be one of the things that reverses the direction of this stock. But where is the stock going right now? I got a ton of questions that everybody said to me, Josh, you told us that if it broke down beneath $79.10, that it was going to capitulate down to 74. Now, here's what I want to clarify with you guys. The breakdown price is a moving average. And every time it comes down and kisses it and then it comes back above, it can manipulate that price slightly. And so right now, the true breakdown price has gone down a few pennies and we're above it. The new breakdown price is $79.07. And so technically, Disney has not broken down yet. And I also want to point out something to you in the charts that's important, is that I think there's actually room to back test resistance since we've come beneath it. And I see two resistances currently above us that it would be very easy for Disney to back test before it were to go lower. The first one is $80.25 and the second one is $81.75. And so I would be expecting the stock to largely move sideways above its current threatening critical support level possibly backtesting those two levels before getting the momentum to push down. But ultimately, I think that we could have a V-shaped 
push down to $74. I am still accumulating the stock at this price range because I do believe that in 2024, this will be a $110 stock and I'm preparing for the long-term play on this one. I will just simply be increasing my purchase price from a breakdown from $79 to $74. You just don't know how long it's gonna go down there and the fact is there's tons of opportunity and favor for this company that's sort of down in the dumps for them to come around and begin to tell us how they're gonna fix things and improve things and have a turnaround story. America still loves a turnaround story and there's plenty of room for redemption for the mouse. I'll leave that there and we're gonna get into my next stock which is gonna be Tesla. You guys know I gotta to cover Tesla today because the family needs new predictions of support and resistance for Tesla as well as what I think is gonna happen with it. I wanna point out another news story that we got on Tesla. Genesis owners now on superchargers. And what this speaks to is the ever expanding moat around Tesla as a company. In my opinion, when I see these news stories, I literally have a visual of Elon Musk walking a couple crocodiles down to the moat and throwing them in and saying, okay, now we got two more crocodiles into the moat. These are positive news stories. Tesla's a juggernaut. They're going to continue to grow. But what price point did we hit and predicted that we would hit? It was 261. Guys, we hit that. We got even as high as 262, but that was resistance. And the price got resisted and it's pulled down heavily since it got to that point. But I'm going to go with you guys. We're going to talk about where it's going to go next. And I think that the trade range for Tesla right now has moved to $244 to $275. And so I'm going to just tell you right now that if we did get back to 244, and I'm not predicting that, but if we did and we broke it, there is a head and shoulders pattern at 244 neckline. And if we broke and closed beneath that with a second day candle forming and closing beneath that 244 neckline, then it would be pretty bearish for Tesla. But personally, I don't see that happening right now. I'm just going to say that the bottom of the current trade range is 244, and we're largely in the middle of it right now. And so Tesla is not doing bad. It's not time to get overly bearish or overly bullish. We simply hit resistance, and now we're going to need to form support above 244 so that we could potentially push higher to 275. And I personally think that because earnings is ahead, that the market's going to give Tesla the benefit of the doubt. And if they don't perform, then they're going to get spanked and smacked down. But I think largely we're going to drift higher the closer we get to earnings. So beneath 244, we still have that support of 234. There's resistance right now at 260 that we have to break with volume above. We had volume increase to the downside today, which means that we did hit the top of the range. That was the resistance. I'm going to share one more news story with you guys I want you to be aware of, which I found quite interesting. And it was that Kathy Wood sells $25 million in Tesla stock as Tesla flashes aggressive buy signal. And so I'm going to ask you guys, is this a bullish or bearish news story? The reason why I ask, is it a bullish news story, is that the last time Kathy Woods unloaded the stock, it was back when it was $101. And so is she making another critical mistake by unloading it at 260? Is this thing going to be going up to 300? And she's telling us by her lack of good judgment that it's the time for us to buy. Or is she making the right decision? Is she taking profits at the top of the range and there is the potential for a much lower price ahead of us? I want you guys to tell me what you think about the decision that Kathy Woods made. All right, and I also will just throw out one more bullish thought that I have regarding looking at the charts for Tesla is that the green days are the days with the highest volume and the red days are the days with the lowest volume. And so I see a lot more conviction to the buy days than I'm seeing to the sell days the charts. Again, tell me what you think is happening with Tesla. I'd love to hear it. I will be trying to get into the Moomoo chat. I do keep an eye on the Moomoo chat, even though I don't always chime in. I'm watching what everybody says as I sit in the conference and the trade show to get a sense of what's going on. I also keep an eye on the Discord chat. So guys, I'm, I'm paying attention and I try to get in there and answer questions. Yesterday, Keenan, Grace, and I did an initial crash course into charting. And we're going to keep doing that because we have so much to share with you guys.
guys about charting and how to get more confidence in your trading so you're not flying blind. And I see through the comments in the Discord and in the Moomoo Moo chat that there are people who are in a fast moving car like Tesla from a trade perspective and they're blindfolded. They literally have no clue and it's not on autopilot. Elon's not in charge of this experience. You're in the stock. You're in control, but you're blindfolded because you're not even using the technicals. I'm trying to give you the technicals that I see, but I want you to learn the technicals. I want you to learn what I know. And the way for you to learn that is by getting involved with the Patreon and following along. We're going to continue to feed what we know to you guys there. I hope you guys all have a great day. Peace and blessings. Hit that subscribe before you check out and hit that like for me. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.